November 19 is International Men's Day. Question though, what does it mean to be a man? Well, we are discussing big man things, name drop to Freetown Collective, Yago Album, with Alvin Brown, creator of the Manly Man series. So we say thank you for joining us, Alvin, how are you? I'm good, thank you for having me. Our pleasure. We're going behind. What is the inspiration for the Manly Man series? Well, I have taught a number of students and one of the things I realized is a lot of the, the young men didn't have father figures. So half of the class, because I teach at a boys' school, so half of the class would have good interactions or good relationships with their fathers, and the other half didn't. And because of that, I recognize that, you know, oftentimes we get upset and we, we wonder why the, this generation is as they are, but a lot of them don't have good examples. And that's the reason why I started the Manly Man series. Now, when, what, what, does, what kind of form, what shape, how is it implemented at this point in time? So currently, I do animations. I do 30 seconds, a minute and a half animations on different topics. I have talks in different high schools and at the university level. And I'm now starting an online web series that involves, that takes those same topics and dive into them in a, in, a, in a lot more detail. The question is though, where are you trying to catch these individuals? You know, people talk about bending the tree while it's young and you can't, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. What is the target grouping for this, for this series, for these messages that you're trying to put forward? I would say from about 10 to 35, because I've, I've, I teach at a high school. Um, and so I, I basically interact with youths from 12 up. But one of my biggest fans is actually a 10 year old girl. <laughs> so because of the animations, it can reach basically every and anyone within that age bracket. And the animated series is definitely very simple, easy to understand, and I've been told somewhat catchy. Now, you're saying that the, because you're dealing with animation, it's easy to deal with some topics. What are some of those topics that you've dealt with already in the animated series? We've done abuse, cyberbullying, the importance of fathers spending time with their children, the importance of being responsible when using technology. And you spoke about some of the feedback, but has feedback caused you to ask questions of yourself or say, I need a little help with this to answer this a little better, to dive a little deeper? Uh, take me through the process of saying, okay, well, I'm animating this. Then somebody looks at it, you get some feedback. What's, what's next? All right, so normally what happens is I may have an interaction with some of the students in class. And based on that interaction, I, I see a need to, to dive into a particular topic. At that point, I usually send the script to a few persons who may be involved in men's issues as well, so they may be part of Caraman or otherwise. Send it to some women as well, especially depending on the, the type of information or the type of message that I'm trying to send. And once that is done and, and it's created, a few drafts are also sent to them. And when that is finished, it, it, that exactly is it. Um, when I realize that a topic is extremely heavy, then I will have a conversation with the class or I will have a conversation with the different groups that I'm invited to. So that is, that is how it's done. If it's, if it's very heavy, then it, it requires more than a simple animation. Which is part of the reason I, I take it that you may be trying to expand, evolve it a little more. But we get to that evolution in just a bit. You mentioned Carryman, and that makes me wonder how big is the reach, how big is the scope? Because Carryman is something that is regional, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. So what I do when I am in 
right? So I'm a, I'm a part of that organization. So I will at times ask persons involved for their feedback on particular topics. And I am reaching out to the, I have somewhat of a reach, not as much as here, but somewhat of a reach in Jamaica as well. So the, the intention is to expand across the Caribbean. And I want to get your perspective because you've spoken about being an educator. So as an educator who is a man, do you find yourself having to kind of step into that role a little more? Because you speak about almost half of the class, on average, sadly, not having an ideal relationship with their father and not possibly not being able to find a role model to pattern positive behavior after. What is that experience like for you? You know, when Father's Day comes around, because I, I don't have any children of my own as yet, but when Father's Day comes around, I tell everybody that I, I kind of feel like Solomon. You know, I have a lot of children. Um, and, and that is exactly what it is. A lot of these young men, once they realize that you actually care, they, they listen. So when, when they're playing the fool and you draw them up, they don't have an issue because they recognize that it's coming from a, a place of, of love, a place of, of concern. It is at times tiring, but you know, when you look and you see the, the changes, when you look and you see the, the, the change responses, then it, it, makes, it makes it worth it. And seeing the smile, having you think about that is a beautiful thing. It also yes. makes me wonder, it also reminds me of the fact that sometimes I used to feel jealous of other students because both of my parents were educators. And then I was, sometimes I'd be like, but wait, no, who's your child? School <laughs> finish. But this brings us to issues of self-identity and finding those role models to pattern behavior after. Um, is that something that you want to address a little more of with the work that you're doing with the series? Most definitely. I think one of the challenges that men have in general when it comes down to relationships, because the whole idea is to have these young men who don't have good examples, give them good examples, explain to them the importance of responsibility, and give them a healthy view of self. And I've come to realize that a lot of times when you see men have issues with their, in their relationships, it, it tends to stem from the fact that a number of them do not have a healthy self-identity. And so if it is that they, let's say they view themselves as, okay, I'm, I view myself as having worth because of my possessions, then my view of anyone cannot be higher than simply a possession. Because if, I, if my worth is based on my possessions, then obviously, no one can have a higher worth than me, and therefore I can easily view others as possessions as well. And so one of the reasons why you have abuse, especially when the women are leaving, is because if these men view her as a possession and view himself as having worth only because of his possessions, then when she's leaving, he feels threatened because somehow he believes that this is taking away from his worth. And therefore, he will do anything, unfortunately, up to even ending her life, because he thinks that this is taking away from him. He feels threatened by her leaving. Now, this is a heavy, heavy topic to, to put a pause, but we take a small break. When we come back, we continue speaking with Alvin Brown about the Manly Man series. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking about the Manly Man series with Alvin Brown, the creator. And in the first half, we would have seen a little clip about with three men involved who were having a conversation. Alvin, you were one of them. Take us through that, those settings, please. And what were some of those things that you all were talking about at that point? Uh, well, we were talking about the we're talking about identity and, and self-identity. We're talking about how the, the different views on masculinity in, in different Caribbean countries. So um, Peter Gales was, was talking about how in Trinidad, you know, a lot of people view men or 
for you to be a man, you need to be able to hold a liquor or to drink a lot of alcohol. And um, Donovan was talking about his experience in Jamaica um, on how you had to, and to, to stamp your dominance and also you were viewed as a man if you had a lot of women. So, you know, we, we, we started that conversation or we had that conversation to, to basically be episode zero of the web series where we would look on all of the views, whether correct or incorrect, of masculinity in the Caribbean. The, our experiences growing up and the fact that especially now when so much is changing that there needs to be a, a conversation about responsible behavior, not just to adults, but to the children as well. And this, this is done so that the pilot, which was um, sponsored by a, a few companies, so that it, it, it then leads into the pilot. And from there, the intention is to have an entire series where we focus on things like the importance of fathers spending time with their children, domestic violence, abuse, how someone even how we handle money, especially now in the in this COVID-19 period where everything is so, so up in the air. And you know, there are a number of persons who have lost their jobs or who have had a reduction in earnings. So all of these things come into play. I mean, you know, this is an interesting time. A few months ago, I actually lost my father. And, you know, this is a time where there is a lot of change. And if it is that you, as is the case, I mean, no one has the ability to, to control their environment. So what is your response? You have to have a, a healthy self-image during times like these, and you, you have to have ways that you can can self-soothe. I mean, you have to have a way and an outlet to to relieve that stress. COVID, this COVID nineteen period has shown more than ever that we need to be able to manage our emotions. We need to be able to talk about emotional intelligence and, and what that is about and do we have persons that we can reason with so yeah i think it's an, a very timely it's timely that this is the time where it is expanding and, and while while we offer condolences on the loss of your father i want to choke a little fire be a little devil's advocate in terms of having those conversations who decides who is right who decides who is right? In terms of, in, in what context exactly? So, the, the conversation, you saw, you're saying that some people are saying, okay, well, to be a man, you right. have to be able to hold your liquor. To be a man, you have to hold yourself in certain ways. I mean, one gentleman was talking about your posture. When can, yeah. you, draw, when can you drop your guard? Are you able to be vulnerable? Right. Going forward with those conversations, who decides who's right? Who decides the narrative? That is an excellent point. I think the intention, what I'm, what I'm, I'm getting at is to, to first understand where everyone is and to then for us to look on what the repercussions are. Because some may, not, may argue that, yeah, all right, to be a man, you have to have a lot of women. All right, cool, fair enough. But what then is the, the outcome of that? So we have a lot of fatherless homes. We have a lot of single parents. And what happens when we have a society filled with single parents? We have a lot of young men who do not know what a man is. And that then leads to them seeking their identity in the media, in the man on the corner, all over the place. And what happens then? You know, it, it feeds into the 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 conveyor belt, um, as one person put, put it, puts it, where you have a lot of young men who then go into a life of crime. So I think one of the things that we have to do whenever we are looking at our definitions or viewpoints is, okay, what is the repercussion? What is the end result? What happens if I continue along this path? 
And the answer that that then tends to solve itself. The problem then tends to solve itself because the problem in general is a lot of men, a lot of young men, don't recognize the whole idea of repercussions to action. So yeah, you can hold the liquor, all right, nothing is wrong. But if it is that you constantly get to that point, then it damages the liver. It reduces your ability to live a good in a. It reduces your. It reduces your life expectancy. And I mean, there are consequences. If it is that you become addicted to it, then you know you get family problems. You have issues with money. So it's it's about recognizing that all actions have consequences. And then the question is, if you continue along this line, what happens next? And I asked before, I want to ask again, is there any way that you can facilitate people who interact with you getting more information from others who deal specifically with alcohol consumption, who deal specifically with abuse? Because it's one thing to say, OK, well, we have a conversation. But many times, this conversation comes against the backdrop of so much learned behavior. I remember yeah. listening to one song, or people talking about one, one plus one, three, or one few, three. So if you allow it to, it will, some things will, may even limit what it is you are allowed to do, what you want yourself to do. I remember a gentleman singing a song, bad man don't drink cherry juice. No girl can say we lose. So in terms of having all of this behind you, after the conversation or after this is initiated, what next? Well, there are a number of, of organizations that do counseling. Um, so I covered depression in, in one of my small videos earlier in the, the, the COVID-19 period. And I covered it simply because there are a number of persons like myself who may not even be in the same country as the rest of their family. So, you know, the question is, how do you handle that? How do you respond to social distance? How, how do you still get exercise? How do you allow yourself to be active enough so that you can regulate your emotions? And at the end of that video, what I did is I gave two 24-hour counseling numbers that were free for one for Jamaica and one for Trinidad and Tobago. So these conversations elicit, elicit questions, but one of the things I try to do is to also point them to professionals in the field. Thank you. And how do people contact you in terms of, I believe there's a, in terms of the web series or the animation or just to have you facilitate a workshop where they would want you to, how do people do that? Well, you can contact the website, so that's manleman.tv, or you can call me at 363-0006, that's 363-0006. All right, so Alvin, we want to thank you so much, Alvin Brown, creator of the Manly Man series, doing good work, necessary work, timely work, in a time that it is very much required. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for joining us this evening. I'm DK Ronster. Have a good night.